transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, this is a chart of BlackRock on a weekly basis. I'm going to bring this to your attention because someone sent me some information that we might find interesting. But you can see here that we've made a ABCD here on the weekly pattern here at 940. It's trading at 938. The high on the day has been 942.73. Uh, but this is what I'd like to share with you. It has to do with astrology. And as you know, I'm a little... Uh, suspect sometimes, but this happens to be BlackRock going back uh, just about, uh, what, nine, year, 11, nine years. And as you can see here, each time we've had these particular uh, Jupiter uh, uh, aspects hitting, it's made either a high, a major high. And we've got one today. So whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But let's uh, let's keep it in mind to see what's happening uh, with some of these things as we're looking. Okay, now let's get on here. Talk about the things that are working. Let's get up here one second and get out of the way here. Hold on, uh, boys and girls. The wheat didn't work, so we're just not going to worry about that anymore. And um, the Russell is not doing very much. Hold on. The YM is not doing very much yet, but it probably will. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find – oh, the gold. Okay. Uh, just one second, folks. Let me let me get this straight up here. Otherwise, I'm going to get a little more confused than I already am. I'll just put the cascade button in so I can pull them up. Let's take a look at the ones that we've uh, felt strongly about here, and that is the bonds. As you can see, bonds and the notes just keep collapsing. And uh, in the event of you know higher or lower interest rates coming, something must not be right. Now, last night we had a perfect 382 pattern right here, folks, as you can see right there. That was worth well over a full point. It just kept dropping and dropping. Uh, now, if you're if you're bullish, uh, uh, treasury bonds. I'm not, but we've had a pretty good correction now over the highs that we made. And I'll see here we should be um, moving on here because see people think well. So far they're right. Anyway, we should have some support here around 124 and change, and then we'll see if we have another little rally in here. But the notes look even worse than the treasury bonds. So. That's an interesting one to, uh, you know, to remind ourselves to look at. Okay, now let's take just a small deep breath here. And I wanted to show you the NASDAQ because we just hit that number just a second ago. And that may be major support right up in here or resistance. We don't know, but it did take out the highs. We could be looking at something like this. Several people have asked me, do you still think that's a valid sell signal in the uh, Dow Jones? at uh, 24 uh, four, uh, two, four, uh, uh, two, two, four, four, two. I said yes I do and uh, if you if you uh, if you don't want to take the trade your stop would be above today's high is what I would uh, suggest it to me if it gets above that then it's probably wrong it's not very far away from it so it's not much of a break here or not much of a, uh, a move here okay now let's get on to the gold market now we had that big prediction that we said in gold uh, it worked relatively well. This number was a 1.27 off the previous high, just just right out of the geometry books. There's your last high right here. Market went there. There was your high. The high of the day was at uh, 27. This measured to 25, and it dropped $50, and it stopped right at the 382, folks, of this low right here. Believe it or not, that's what that low, that low right there was a 382 of that whole move, and we had a heck of a move up. The real interesting part was last night, you see, because we had the big break, and then it went sideways. Then it makes a little tiny ABCD pattern right here, okay? Then, then here's where the pedal met the metal. You have your low, you have your high. Look at this pullback. Now, it took a whole little over an hour and a half to make that correction. So you've got to consider that if you're intraday trading. Look at it. 
goes to the exact tick of the exact low here at the 84 and from 84 away it goes and then we had a big move up and you would be watching for the next 382 but it went far far below that you can see here the next 382 should have come in right about here we went below it to the 50 percent and then back up so it's still going higher here probably take this out but on the long-term weekly folks that long-term weekly chart is a it's a real bear if let's just look well that's a freudian slip i guess let's bring it up here and show you because uh, the high end of this range up here is at uh, 26 uh, 45 and so far we've been to 26 uh, 27 so within about 20 dollars of that number that is up in here the bonds work pretty well uh, gold has done what it's supposed to pretty much do but the stocks have gone higher than I expected, uh, not not so much in the Dow Jones, but they certainly have in the S and P, uh, and but just the S and P. The Russell is lagging behind quite badly, and the Nasdaq is just basically making a 78% retracement of the high that we made from way back uh, in July. That's what I'm looking at. Whether that is a any help or not, I don't know. So let's move over here and get these out of the way. And I have to. Uh, I have to correct this again so I can get to my uh, uh, get to the charts as I wanted to show them. We've covered everything, the bonds, uh, the notes. I took the notes off the board here. Just one second. I want to show you, those of you that have been watching the notes, you they've done pretty much exactly what we thought they were going to do. Let's get the weekly up here. So this is what we were watching for. Uh, that was the number up there. Now, this is... Uh, this is it. So if it gets above that, <laughs> holy moly, it's already it's already went had a, a higher week and a lower how uh, had an outside week already. So you're looking at this on a smaller time frame. You'll see, you know, there's uh, what's what's happening here. Now there was your 382 retracement, like what we had in the uh, Treasury bonds, and that had a nice move in it too. But anyway, the one thing I can promise you, folks is the volatility. The volatility is here to stay. And we're going to start seeing stuff that's just going to say, are you kidding me? I mean, stop and think of the Dow Jones yesterday, folks. thing was 500 points higher, went down to be unchanged on the day, and then rallied 600 points. I mean, <laughs> that's a 1,500-point swing in a matter of a few hours. That's not how the bull markets like to have there. They like to go up little by little, not herky-jerky like this. Hey, I, I could be wrong on this. I... <laughs> Like I say, I'm often wrong, but never in doubt. Okay, now we had a question about the crude oil. Crude oil is still holding its own here. You can see this is where we were. We had the big move down all this week, and uh, all we've done so far, there. You watch for the 382. There was our action. Here was our action yesterday. Okay, this is the 19th. This is our action for today. We made a higher high, so you have to recalculate the 382, correct? So we're going to do that right now. And you're going to go from your low up to your high, and you're going to put that in right about there. And I don't know, it moves $1,500 basically straight up if you like 382s. Sometimes you don't. I'm going to be in London on the 24th of October for eight hours of live trading. It'll be available to the folks here, too. If you can't make it, we're going to make something available like we usually do on our day trading session. Um, hopefully have a couple of nice guests in there, but I'm looking forward to that. A lot of a lot of friends from all over Europe will be coming to visit. It's limited to 33 people, folks, so I'll be sending out the uh, invitations very shortly, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Steve Eight, Rhodes seven, started seven. his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. 
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I want to explain the, the, the wheat trade because I, I was recommending to buy at 569 and I had to stop in at 559. What I did is I just went, once we went below this low right here, I had a strong probability of going here, so I just moved my stop to 65. Uh, and I mentioned that in a newsletter that, or the video that I sent out earlier this morning. You had that opportunity to do that, but we'll look at it again, but not today because there's only an hour left to go in the trading, but we'll watch it again on Friday. They're going to be attesting these lows back here, which is a 382 also, and that's also going to be a 50% of this whole move in wheat. So I think it's still valid as a possible buy, but not quite ready to get to it yet so this is a this is the bigger ABCD that was alarming and that's why uh, we decided uh, it decided to uh, to get out of it okay all right let's move on here and talk about uh, boy there's a lot of static on the line Al I don't know if you can hear the static but boy it is really really bad uh, Al can you uh, the static is so bad I can hardly hear my sound going I don't know what is the sound okay I mean uh, I guess it is. No one's telling me, so I'll just keep talking. I, I just talk to myself anyway. It's usually the best way to go, don't you think? Okay, let's move on here to uh, – uh, let's talk about this, Russell, here, because I think if you get a chance, this is a big ABCD. We might still get there by the end of the day. The way I'd handle this, you see the old high that we had right back here was back on uh, July the uh, 30th, okay? And then we, from there we went uh, straight down. Now we've come back. Uh, that ABCD measures to 2312. This old high here was uh, uh, 2320. Uh, so somewhere up in this ballpark is probably where you want to be thinking about maybe uh, getting short the, uh, the Russell because it's certainly the weakest uh, of the group. And, uh, uh, but that's, you know, well, actually the NASDAQ is a little bit weak on a relative basis, but strength-wise, this is it. Today's action was uh, rather, uh, you can see we had a big move up here last night and then bang down. Uh, there was a 382, went a little above it, came down, and now it looks like we're making an ABCD Gartley here. Let's just draw that one in just so we can see it together. This is a eight-minute chart, so this would be a relatively low-risk trade. There is, is here at uh, 285 with a stop above here, say 295. 
So you have to risk more than 10 points on that if you wanted to take a look at that one. But again, it doesn't take much for get these markets moving. And boy, they certainly are moving. No question about it. All right. Now we have to take a look at the dollar index, folks, because that's how they're paying these folks off these days. We want to get that up here. We have had one heck of a run here. You can see, don't give up on the U.S. dollar yet, boys and girls. Please, this is the long-term weekly chart here. You know, see, we're really close down here, down about another point. You can see we made a lower low today. Let's look at it on the daily basis to see what it looks like. See, we made that lower low, then we had a pretty good rally off of that. So we're going to go down and move it on to the 60-minute chart and see what we can see now. This, this is what's happening with the dollar. See, we had a move down, there's your move up, and then you have the 78% uh, retracement. It's trying to hold, it really is. But even if it doesn't hold, if we get down here below 99, that's going to be the key level because the whole world is going to be bearish the U.S. dollar at 99 on the dollar index, and that's not got what you want to be. You want to be looking because that's a, going to be a weekly a weekly number and you, you got to, you have to respect that. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> anyway, that's what, that's what I'd be watching for. So you've taken out this week's low that was back here at uh, 101. And now we've taken out that low. So look, the last time we got to this, you see, we had a huge rally and we're coming down right now. We've been coming down since March. We've been in a bear market in this darn thing since March. And here we are, you know, eight months later, and it's still, uh, you know, heading lower, making a lower low this week. So don't give up on it yet. Now, people have asked me about the British pound. All we did on that British pound was go back to that 133 level that I think is going to be some resistance. But let's get it up so we can see it right here. And we'll bring it right up. And we hit the 133. We backed off a little bit right now, as you can see. The 1.618 number on this came in here at 326. We're trading at 328, so we've gone above that. The high of the day has been, uh, the 330 has been uh, 1.331. So it did make a new high. We'll look at this on a shorter time frame just so everybody can see it. There was the high was made, then it's backed off a little bit. Here's where we are right now. So this is a uh, pattern that should be completing about now. But again, it's really sl 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 slightly related to the U.S. dollar, also, because it's uh, you know that's what we're that's what we're sort of watching here. Okay, now let's move on here. Uh, Shane Smolian will be our guest at the break. I wanted to do one more thing here with this uh, with this Dow Jones folks because uh, I feel really strongly about this. Hey, I felt strongly about the bonds. That one worked. Felt strongly about the gold. Nah, that one worked for a little bit. But remember, in my order of importance, it was bonds first, uh, gold second, stock market third, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, this is the Dow Jones. We're going to look at this on the daily one more time. This may or may not be something, folks, that we hit uh, 425, uh, 14 was the actual high on the day. The 1.27 uh, came in at 09. So it's trading a little bit below that right now. But to me... This is a uh, uh, a very, very strong sell signal because it is a drive one, drive two, drive three. And just for kicks and giggles, let's just do it one more time since we've got our Astro Man coming up here. I'm going to do this and put up the moon phases so we can see them on the bottom to see how they worked. See, here's our lunar eclipse that were over yesterday or today. Okay, The last time we had a new moon was right there. Then we had a full moon right here. It didn't do anything for several days. This new moon was uh, spot on. Uh, this full moon here was right in the middle, really didn't do very much. Uh, this one right here, right in the middle. This one right on the money. Uh, this was pretty close. And after that, there's not too much because sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, folks. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, that's what we're paying attention to here uh, this morning. And I hope that, uh, that you uh, get some information of it. But I still feel that that is a valid sell signal, but it's not necessarily going to happen because these markets are still going up. If this were Friday and an up week, uh, wow, I'd say, well, you know, you can't do that on a Friday, but this is a Thursday. They still have, you know, a couple hours of trading left. Look what, they, look what they've done over the last few hours swinging with this thing, folks. Just let me show you. Look at, look at this beautiful ABCD buy pattern here in the Dow Jones. That's a 300-point that's a move. Look at this. 
you down 200, up 200, a little A, B, C, D in between, and look at this. And that's this is where we are right now. So I firmly believe we might be able to get back up into this area here, but you have to risk more uh, than a couple points in this because of the fact that it's so volatile. But this is a this is a major type stuff that we've seen right in here. Just looking at these patterns to th this morning. Oh, we got a. I think I'm off the air already. Nope, not yet. There's the first A, B, C, D to the downside. You had a Gartley right in between it that was worth a, a, a great deal of money. It dropped 200 points. Look at this. It went from 42 all the way down 200 points. It dropped down and back up 200 points. I mean, that's uh, that's the kind of market you want to be watching if you're day trading, for God's sake. That's no question about it. All right, let's take a little break, and we'll be back with the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Okay, folks, I believe we have the wolf trader himself in the house, Shane Smolian. How are you doing, my friend? Larry, how are you? 
Long time living no talk. The dream, baby. And the living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass. You got it. You got it. All right. You ready for some S&P? I'm ready. Fire away. All right. We're going to start with S&P, and then I'm going to do uh, a, few, a few charts just of some equities, and then we're going to talk about uh, some interest rate cycles because we just had a, a Fed cut, and it was a pretty big 1.5. So I'm going to try to look into my crystal ball to figure out where where I think interest rates could be going. Uh, but we'll start we'll start out with S&P first here because this is obviously the most popular market. And I just want to go through a couple of slides here to kind of give the overall picture of what my thought process is here. Uh, first okay. of all, today was Sun Trine Uranus, which is a pleasant surprise. So we had this big reversal in equities, which is great. Uh, so it's great for the markets. Uh, so that that type of reversal, especially after a Fed meeting, is typical. The markets do like to go the opposite way a lot of times after the day after the Fed. And so the Fed's beginning this this new cycle of loosening monetary policy. Um, I think real estate and the stock markets have held up very well up to this point. We've had this whole tightening cycle. Uh, and there, there are some soft spots in real estate, of course. If you look out west, there are certain areas that are having issues. But overall, the prices have been going up for, for real estate. Uh, and so we are coming now into a loosening phase. So I do think that uh, real estate and the stock market are going to be in pretty good shape here for the next few years coming up because we're just starting this cycle. Now, right now we're into this election cycle, which is generally bullish for stocks. Our markets get pretty excited around the debates and before the election. So, you know, that combined with what I'm seeing with the Fed juice right now uh, tells me this is this is a very bullish situation going forward. And I, I think we're just starting. I think we're just starting this cycle going up. Uh, and so I'm able to track what what is happening here, both uh, explicitly by the Fed, like with the rate cuts, and implicitly by what I track behind the scenes. Uh, so uh, I do think, and people are asking me about the election. Uh, I don't really, you know, I don't really know right now. The election is so close; it's too close to call. But I will, I will make a comment. I, you know, I focus on uh, really what's going on with the Fed, the Treasury. I do think if you can keep Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen together, I think that's very bullish for the stock market. Uh, in particular, because they think they work well as a team. So what they have in place right now, I think I think they've navigated through this very well in terms of the tightening phase. And I do think that, you know, we're we're poised now to have, uh, I think, a, a nice run here. Um, now, we've had an, a pretty big run already, of course. But, you know, some people <laughs> believe some people believe that the rate cuts uh, lead to a sell off. And I want to I want to address this real quick. There's some, you know, the old way of thinking versus the new way of thinking. Um, and if you look back at history, the, the, the minute that the rate cuts start, uh, usually the markets sell off. And that's because generally the Fed, they, you know, they view that their interest rate cuts as a lagging indicator and that the economy is getting weak and the market tends to sell off. However, I want to point out to everybody that the modern Fed, Federal Reserve, cannot be compared to the pre-2008 Fed. So interest rates are lagging, of course, they're lag, they lag behind, they see data and they, they, they come after. But the Fed that we have now is a very different Fed. Uh, the Fed acts in real time, there's real time actions, such as the repo market, the Fed came in during COVID and completely rescued the repo market, you have the reverse repo market, you have the credit facilities, and then this has changed the market dynamics. So it's not the same as it was before. So if we go back and look pre 2008, to, we think, oh, well, their interest rates are, are, are cutting now. So that's got to be bearish for the market. I don't think that's going to apply anymore. So quantitative easing has shifted how the markets react to Fed interventions. And so I do think comparing comparing today's Fed to the pre-2008 Fed is not valid due to these structural changes. Now, the Fed can act in real time now, like we saw when we had that banking crisis a couple years ago. They acted over the weekend to set up a credit facility. So we're not looking at the same Fed that we looked at before. Okay, so my interpretation of the rate cuts is that they're bullish for the market simply because we have all of these tools in the toolbox that the Fed can just lay out now. And I've always compared this to like, you know, you have a team that's on the field and you have your second and third string players in and your best players are still on the bench. That's basically what we've been looking at the last couple of years. I mean, the Fed has not even put any of their tools in yet. They're just now starting to, they're cutting rates. They're just now starting this phase. So I think, you know, once if the Fed really needs to pull out these tools, I think there's a lot, a long, long way that we can go to the upside from here. And I'm taking this strictly off the perspective of the Fed, not the economy. OK, not the economy, because the economy has nothing to do with the market anymore. We know this during covid, you know, they were able to rally the market while the economy was shut down. It's, it's a very different thing now. It's more integrated. And so I this is how I focus on the market. So I always tell people, be careful with past history because there's a phrase 
that says if it's obvious, right? If something's obvious, it's obviously wrong. And I want to give you some examples. So a lot of people were asking me, well, Fed's going to cut rates. Shouldn't I buy the bonds before, you know, the Fed's going to cut? Shouldn't I buy bonds before the market? No, it backfired. I mean, that seemed obvious, right? The, uh, the, the treasuries and the, the tenure has been trending down for days, right? Housing prices continue to rise during the tightening cycle. That didn't seem obvious, right? Uh, the inverted yield curve did not result in a recession. Everybody thought that was obvious, right? And so despite the world shutting down, the Fed rallied the market during COVID. That was really not obvious, right? So we know that for me, the proving ground is COVID. This is the, the biggest obstacle that they've had to overcome. And so I think what we're facing now is nothing compared to COVID. So it's gonna t I think it's going to take something on the magnitude of COVID to really shake this market. I don't really see anything right now on the horizon. So I would just put in here that using past interest rate cuts to predict a market decline, I don't think that's going to work this time. And I know people come up with some beautiful graphs and they show all of these, you know, this is when the Fed cut here and the markets yeah. went down here. But this is a different time, a different place and a different era. So I think we need to think in the context of what is happening now, not the context of what happened before 2008. If I find so, out what's the difference about this market than anybody, I just turned bullish. I just want everybody to know, okay? <laughs> okay, I hope that'll you can hear me. There's, that'll do it. There's some noise there in the, in the back. But this is an example. So this is this is the Fed juice here. This is the 10-year note. And the Fed juice goes into this cell on 917. It didn't seem logical. How could the market be going down, the, the treasuries be going down into a Fed cut? Because the, cause this type of action... Uh, a lot of times this has been priced in already, like they, they've been pricing in this rate cut for a while. And so the Fed juice is still in this cell. Now, we are coming into a positive day tomorrow. You could get a reaction in the bonds delayed like we saw today. But overall, I think the idea here is to follow what what this Fed juice is doing. Now, the next slide here is from the USA gymnastics team from 2024. Right. So this is Simone Biles, gold medalist. Right. And they had a phrase which was F around and find out that this was actually their nickname of the U.S. Uh, women's gymnastics team, right? This is what, and basically the idea is you're gonna play with fire and you're gonna get burned. And I always tell people this, you know, if you think you're gonna short against the Fed here, if you think that you're gonna, just because it's at a certain technical level or something, that you're gonna short against this when they're just getting started and the first string players are still on the bench, you're gonna find out real fast. And we saw that today with the NASDAQ as it shot super high. Uh, and so I do expect this to continue. And I, and I do think we're just the beginning of this. And, I, and I, to be honest with you, I don't think it really matters who is elected in November. I think this is a brand new cycle that we're coming into and we're just now starting this. So that's the, the phrase that I told people. So be careful like with Stay this. with us, stay with yeah. us, stay with us. You're coming back, right? Yeah, absolutely. Shane Smolian's in the house. We'll be right back after we pay a few bills, folks. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market 
giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, with Shane Smolian. Please continue, my friend. Absolutely. Okay, so I have a chart here which shows the S&P, the Fed juice down here, which takes into account, it's taking into account market action versus what the Fed is doing. And it's a neural network. And so when the market gets strong relative to the Fed, we get these buy, these buy signals. When it gets weak, we get the sell signals. But right into here, 913, 916, you can see we had a double buy signal into here. And when you get that type of a situation, the breakouts that we see today are, it's not surprising. Uh, we, we actually are long on the, uh, on the NASDAQ too, as of yesterday, as a single day trade. The, these types of breakouts tend to occur on the direction of the Fed juice. So when the Fed juice is, is trending up, like we see here, I think there's the potential here for this market to keep going. And the, the next time we see this sell on the quad liner is not until 926. So I think there's room here to run, even in the next week to the upside. And I think I think we're just gonna keep going. I mean, I think we, we've got this election coming up and I just think, I know it's hard to believe because it's already run so much, but I really believe that this is likely kicking off the start of a new cycle here, at least in terms of what the Fed is doing. And that's that's what I focus on. Uh, there's so much to focus on with these markets. There's technical analysis, there's the economy, there's there's fundamentals. Uh, but what I focus on, my specialty, is not even the Astro as much. It's the Fed. And and so this is what I track here. These are the Fed internals. And you can see there is a change of character here going all the way back to last April. Uh, you can see that the Fed internals started to shift their stance here. And now when they made this next low here, I wasn't sure if this was actually turning yet. But once we made another higher low, uh, this was confirmed now that they, they had already started changing their stance back in April. Uh, th I think this is poised here. They're poised to really continue to support this market. And I, j I just think this is in a really good spot here. It's a lot easier to make money to the upside. It's a lot easier to be bullish than it is bearish because when we see these bearish situations, I mean, the market spikes down and then you get these huge ranges from day to day with the choppiness. And then th the thing about the Fed is, and I talk about this too, that this is a, this is another old school philosophy is oh you got to have a double bottom you got to have you know not necessarily when you have this these fed type of anticipations like we saw you get these v-shaped bottoms and you and we've had this scenario where you've had these consecutive up days where it goes up 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 like that and that's not a, a normal thing it is normal though around in the context of the fed and when we start to see these types of market behaviors it's extremely bullish uh, so you know for me i just feel like okay finally here we can start to get some resolution uh, it's been a really, uh, you know, when it gets goes starts going down, it gets choppy. It's very kind of tough to to navigate when it's trying to make these bottoms. But I do think that we're in a good position here going forward. Now, again, this has nothing to do with the economy. I'm just looking at what the Fed is doing. I know the economy. There's bad numbers, and they probably saw something that they didn't like to do a half a point cut. But I do think also there's a lot of you know fixed income has become a thing again, and a lot of people are into these bonds and even savings and CDs, and the half a point could really start to chase some of that money out. I mean, that, that's a pretty big move. I didn't think they would do half. I thought they would do a quarter uh, and then maybe, you know, they can always cut between meetings. They don't have to have a meeting, but man, they really went for, for the half there. So I, I just think that's that's a positive, net positive. And, and based upon what I'm looking at, you know, we have mul multiple markets here in these buy signals. Apple's been in this buy in terms of the Fed juice into here. 
you can see this is also in a double buy into here. This is this is on a new breakout here to the upside. Tesla's in a buy on the Fed use in the quad lunar cycle. Broadcom's in a buy on the on the Fed use in the quad lunar cycle. Uh, now a lot of people ask about Nvidia, right? So I started tracking Nvidia with the Fed use here. You can see the red arrows are the Fed use. Uh, so I'm highlighting this on the screen. But this Fed use goes into this buy on A13. Now it's been kind of sputtering around here in spite of that. And I think the reason is because the quad, it's against the quad lunar right now. Now I, I always just go with the Fed use no matter what. But when the quad lunar is with the Fed use, you get a, you get a much easier movement in this market. So I do think that once we get to 923, it, if this Fed use is still in a buy, which it looks like it's very solid at this point, I do think there's a chance Nvidia will start to make that move to the upside. I just think all of these stocks are going to be headed higher here and so again i don't think it matters about i mean i think you know ideal scenario for stocks is if powell and yellen can can stay together but still i just think that this is a a broader picture here a change of stance that i think is very positive caterpillars in a buy on the fed use in the quad lunar cycle i mean i'm looking at different sectors here i mean caterpillar is different than nvidia obviously that's technology i mean this is, and this this relates to 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 global uh, economics. Caterpillar has a huge international presence in terms of construction. So all throughout central, around the world, Central South America too. Um, volatility, the VIX, this is falling. This is in a cell. I mean, no matter how, where you look, I mean, this is very, very positive. This is a very, very positive picture right now for stocks. And I and I haven't seen this in a long time. I mean, this is, I mean, this is this is good. So it's easier to make money to the upside. Obviously, RK Innovations in a buy, double buy, Fed use in the quad lunar. Uh, Bitcoin is in a buy. I mean, so there's and Bitcoin tends to run with um, the, it, it tends to run with uh, when it gets risk on when the market gets risk on the Bitcoin tends to run with it. So, you know, that's another sign. So as we look into these different areas, you know, I just I, I no matter how, where I'm looking here, I'm starting to see some some pieces of the puzzle come together that at least suggest uh, that, of course, there's no guarantees, but at least suggest that I think there's the potential here for uh, a very uh, good run here. Um, I had talked a little bit about interest rates. People were asking me about, you know, the Fed funds rate versus CPI and, you know, it, 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 did the Fed cause this inflation? And I just want, I want to show a couple slides here. I don't even know if we're going to get to the interest rate cycles, but I want to talk about this. Um, this is a, this is a graph that I always show people when they blame the Fed for the inflation. And, and, and this is the CPI here. So on the top here, this is the CPI here. You can see the steady, we had a pretty steady range here between one and 2% into here. But this is a period from 2009 um, all the way out to present where interest rates were almost at zero and we didn't have really that big of a change in the CPI. And I think because what we see now, what, what we see now is essentially inflation is kind of a targeted thing, like Kiwi kind of targets the market, the interest rates target the housing market. Uh, and so I think the biggest cause here of this inflation was that big dump of the money supply that we had during COVID, and it seems like that's worked out of the system now. And so if we can get these rates down without the inflation spiking, and I, and again, this is the proof here. I mean, I go back and look at this. There is no spike in inflation here when the Fed was at zero for a long time. So I do think if we can get these interest rates back down, uh, I don't think it's going to really affect inflation too much. Uh, I think uh, the biggest issue with inflation is going to be, and it could be supply chain issues. It could also be, I think if we have another stimulus type of program, that could be an issue. That's the biggest risk. But I don't think the Fed rate is really the risk here. I just don't think it, it is. Um, I have another graph here that shows the CPI versus the M2. And you can see here, M2 is the money supply. And we had this big spike during COVID. That's that's when it starts to shoot up. I mean, that's really when you get all this money in the system. And then, of course, it comes down here. And so we have these artificial moves after during COVID, the stimulus, and then this artificial move here because we had the reverse repo facility taking money. So it's the whole manipulation here recently of the money supply. But the point is, I don't think that the interest rates are the cause of the inflation. I just don't. Uh, and I can go back and look at that over and over again. It might have been in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, but I think everything now is very targeted in terms of the different programs. I mean, the Fed has all these programs that so they target specific markets. I think it's much more uh, channeled now. So I just think that, you know, people are asking, well, won't inflation come back? I don't I don't I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I just don't. I mean, unless like I said, unless we get uh, some type of a situation where uh, where the Fed um you know where there's a stimulus like and i think the stimulus would would cause would if there's more m2 come just dumping into the system i think that would cause inflation quicker than than the feds the feds funds rate so uh that's just my look on that hey stay with us got another two minutes of the chief coming up we'll be right back folks
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Back, folks, with Shane Smolian. Please continue, my friend. I think we got two minutes, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's make the most. <laughs> All right, this is okay. So I'm going to abbreviate this for you. Th these are interest rate cycles that I have been looking at. I looked at this during the COVID spike. There was a lot of them that peaked here. The the bottom line is that this these cycles, no matter how you look at it, I looked at this cycle, I looked at a Jupiter cycle, I looked at a Saturn cycle. They all have interest rates declining. We're in this first phase down here now, uh, in this first push down here. But then it shows it bottoming around 2028, and I really think that we got four years here of uh, housing markets likely to really start to accelerate to the upside. I mean, they held up during this whole tightening phase, stock market rising. I think you're going to have four years here. Uh, of, uh, and then 2028 is when I would really start to look at this and, and say, okay, we're, we're getting, we're reaching an extreme here, but you know, we're coming out of a tightening cycle. We're just coming out of a tightening cycle. So I think that to me, in terms of the interest rates, I think they're going to be coming down. I think they're going to be coming down until 2028. Uh, and I think that that's going to be net positive for for a lot of things. But um, you know, the main the main issue here, of course, is inflation. And I think if they can keep that under control, I just think this is a very very good spot right now for the Fed. I mean, they have bullets in the chamber; they're not at zero, and they just started the, the rate cutting cycle. And they've been through a lot of storms, and they have a lot of tools in the toolbox. And that's the thing that I would emphasize to people: is just understand that this is a modern era Fed, and they're changing all the time and adapting and they they've been through a lot i mean they've been through a lot since COVID, even the bank failures and i just think that they have a uh 
I, I just think this is a positive outlook. And I do think that we probably have four years here of of positive moves here, particularly in the housing market. I just think that that is a, I'm, I'm very bullish on the housing market right now, real estate. So okay. that's that's the presentation. You did a great job, my friend. Stay stay cool over there in, in Florida. And I watched I loved seeing videos of little Jackson playing basketball. Folks, he's got a son that can shoot jump shots from the uh, foul line already. He's only what nine or isn't he? Nine, nine, nine. years old. Wow. Nine. He'll be with the Lakers soon. <laughs> Thanks for joining Thanks, us, Larry. boys and girls. You bet. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Uh -huh.